I know Fargo people can do it and a million sandbags will be easy. How many volunteers does it take to fill one million sandbags? The city of Fargo says about 200 and it's asking for those volunteers to take shifts at Sandbag Central until all of the bags are filled. It may sound like a lot of work, but Valley News team's Maddie Jelseth spoke to a few people who say they're happy to lend a helping hand so they can protect their home and possibly yours from a potential flood. The American Red Cross is also holding a volunteer information session tonight and tomorrow evening. This session will help volunteers learn more on how they can help distribute supplies to people in need of flood relief. If you want to get involved in filling one of those sandbags, here's what you need to know. Fargo Sandbag Central opens on Tuesday, March 26th at 7 a.m. Operations will continue on a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. weekday schedule until the 1 million sandbag goal has been reached. At this point, the city does not anticipate operating Sandbag Central on the weekends. If you want to register to volunteer, you can call the Fargo Sandbag Central hotline at 701-476-4000. Even though it's the second day of spring, signs of the winter weather are still holding on. Check this out. You might have driven under these long icicles hanging under the overpass on 10th Street South in Fargo. Ice has been building up from dripping water and created some icicles looking to be about a foot long. We reached out to the city to see if there's any risk of this damaging cars and if they're considering doing anything to remove them, but we have yet to hear back. Hopefully those icicles keep melting thanks to the warmer weather we've had today. It sounds like we don't have a whole lot to worry about going into tonight. So Justin, how's our evening shaping up? And thank you, Veronica, and good evening, everybody. Justin, I have never been so excited to hear we're average. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, yep. Justin. All right, police are taking a closer look into a possible stabbing that happened this morning in Grand Forks. It happened at the 2000 block of 7th Avenue North. Dispatch got a call from a man who said he had been stabbed by a woman. Then police received a call from a woman who said it was in self-defense and the man was armed with a knife. After an initial investigation, both people involved were released. The incident is still under investigation. You might have noticed a fallen sign off the I-29 exit near I-94. Good news, it's finally being removed. Last Thursday, after our last round of winter weather, the strong winds made this billboard near the tri-level fall to the ground. Crews working on the area said, we're lucky it fell away from the interstate because it didn't cause any traffic backups. After the roof collapsed at the Red River Valley Fairgrounds, trapping dozens of vehicles inside, some are starting to emerge. On Wednesday, 38 of the approximate 67 cars stored in Harvest Hall were uncovered, but the fate of those still left inside is uncertain. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkiewicz finds out what's in store for the remaining cars and talks to one owner who was happy to be behind the wheel of his street machine. The Red River Valley Fair Association says it'll be a couple days before everything stored in Harvest Hall is removed. For safety reasons, they're asking folks who haven't yet received a call that their car is out to stay off the fairgrounds until they receive notice to come pick it up. Boozed up bicycle and horse riders still have to worry about being prosecuted under North Dakota drunken driving laws. Senators killed a House bill Wednesday that would exempt riders of horses and bicycles from drunk driving laws. The legislation would have still allowed riders on horses and bicycles to be charged with non-criminal offenses such as speeding and other traffic violations. Senator Kevin Kramer visited Fargo earlier today. He was joined by U.S. Secretary of Labor Alexander Acosta. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum was also in attendance, along with other officials and business leaders, to discuss workforce issues and association health plans. The idea of the health plans are for small businesses or groups, such as farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, to come together as an association to negotiate health care. So these are high quality plans, they cover pre-existing conditions, they have all the protections of all the plans that we're familiar with that are offered by the big businesses out there. But it simply allows a small business to have access to the insurance market the way a big business now has access to that market. Secretary Acosta also discussed the challenges in filling many open jobs, not just in North Dakota, but in all of the U.S., particularly with folks re-entering society from prison. 
The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources is asking the public's help in identifying the people responsible for dumping eight deer carcasses in the Zumbro River in southeastern Minnesota. The DNR says it received a report that the bodies of eight white-tailed deer were dumped earlier this week on the shore of the river just outside of Kellogg. Seven of the deer were bucks, all had their antlers and skull plates removed. Anyone with information on the deer is asked to call the DNR's Turn In Poachers hotline at 800-652-9093. Bison fans in Fargo and scattered across the country are still celebrating the thrill of a big victory. Valley News Team's sports director Beck Hool joins us now from South Carolina with more on preparations for tomorrow's game against the Duke Blue Devils. All right, thank you, Beth, and good luck, gentlemen. So as mentioned, NDSU goes up against the top-seeded Duke Blue Devils tomorrow night. You can watch the game here on KX4 at 610. One of the most popular trucks in the U.S. is in the spotlight, where the F-150 sits in recent crash test ratings still ahead tonight.